I'm Opal Mitchell. I work for the Central Arkansas Library System and I work at the Nixon Branch in Jacksonville. This is um, the Crafting with Opal program I do on Thursday nights at 7. Um, tonight I'm going to be showing you how to make a bib and for a baby and a hat for a baby. Um, sorry, I'm, my one of my pup, my dogs behind me was fussing at me. Um, <laughs> Here. I'll let you be on video for a second. She's she's fussing at me because she doesn't. I'm not paying attention to her, but that's okay. That's okay. You'll live. You'll live, Zoe. Okay. Um, anyway, I guess I'll I'll get started here. Um, if um, you were able to come by the library and pick up, oh gosh, she just knocked something over on me. Um, come by the library. Um, I was given supplies away for this program. Um, I only had one person pick up supplies, but um, uh, hopefully they will join us tonight and anyone else who had their own supplies. Um, hopefully y'all will join me too. It's a pretty simple um, pattern really. Um, that's why I'm doing a bib and a hat because they're both pretty simple to do. One of them um, will have to do the zigzag stitch on, which is the hat, because when you do it, work with anything that's stretchy type material and you want it to allow it to still stretch, um, zigzag stitch is the best thing to do for that to allow for the stretch. And um, the bib we're doing is, um, you could do that one with two pieces of flannel fabric. Um, we're doing it with one piece of flannel, one piece of cotton. Um, I did that because, um, well, I was buying supplies for the library for to, to do it, you know, everyone to come to the library and participate. Um, and when I buy supplies, you know, for the classes we have in the library, I try to save money, and that's, that's a great way to do it. I mean, if you wanted the bib to be reversible, you could do, you know, flannel on both sides. But um, we were, this was a planned program we were going to do before all the coronavirus stuff happened. So I um, had the supplies already, but I um, was going to postpone it until we could have them in the library again, the programs in the library, but we don't know when that's going to be, so I thought, might as well go ahead and do it. And like, we could always do this program again later in the library. Um, so anyway, I'm going to get started on showing you how to do that. Um, hopefully you have cut out your patterns ahead of time, because I, I have mine already cut out. And I went ahead and ironed my fabric too, so it would be nice and flat. Um, because I figure people know how to iron their fabric. They don't need to see me doing it. Um, the main thing is you want to see how to how to put the how to cut it out and put it together type of thing. So I'm gonna get started and do that. I'm going to reverse my camera and lower it so we can see my table here. I might even have to raise this back up just a little bit so it won't be so close. All right, um, this is the fabric I'm going to use for my bib, and this is the one I did previously. It's very simple. It's um, got a Velcro uh, closure on it. Um, you can do buttons, but Velcro, um, if you're a beginner, I always try to gear my classes towards beginners. Um, I just figure that's the easiest one to teach is the Velcro. And honestly, when you have a kid, that's probably the easiest one to deal with. <laughs> You know, the snaps sometimes can be a pain to undo. And then the hat, um, this is the example of the hat we're going to be doing. And like I said, we're going to be doing a zigzag stitch for that. We'll switch over whenever we're doing the hat to a zigzag. But we'll be doing straight stitches with the um, uh, bib here. And you can see the back of mine, it's just a cotton fabric. And the front is the flannel. So that's my examples, and I'm going to move those out of the way. And um, this is pretty simple. Uh, you just take your fabric, and um, before I cut this out, it, on the side here, it said to fold here. That's why it looks so funny, is you're going to be folding your fabric, and you want to fold it with the um, right sides facing each other. And I'm avoiding the edge here because that's um, you don't ever want to use that whenever you're making your projects and also um, if the direction of the images mattered you would pay attention to that this one 
Yeah, I guess, yeah, this is more up and down for this one. Um, sometimes they go in all different directions, and it really doesn't matter what, what direction is up and what direction is down. But this one does matter. So I'm going to fold it where it's, I'm not going to get any of that white, because that's not something we want to get. Hmm, I could cut that off, but I'm going to not worry about it. So you're just going to fold it, and I'm just going to turn this this way because that just happens to be the direction that I'm doing this. So you're going to definitely line this up with the folded edge. You don't want this to be all the way on the folded edge because you're going to cut that. You don't want it to be... Um, if, if you do kind of, when we're cutting it, you want to cut around the edge. Over here, you're, you're just going to cut up to here and cut off the side here. You're not going to cut, cut up here because it cut in half. And um, since this is paper, um, we're going to need to pin, pin it down. Sometimes you can um, use, um, like if you have to have an actual pattern, those... Um, yeah, I guess you, they would move too. Um, the only time it wouldn't move is, um, I have some wax paper, and if you ever cut out your patterns on wax paper, you can iron it down to your fabric, and it would stay in place for you, and not shift. So that's, um, I like using the, the wax paper for that, um, that way it, it sticks to the, whatever it is that you're going to be cutting it out on. And I'm just going to go around and pin it down. So, um, actually, I'm going to pin it in a little bit, a little bit further because there's two ways you could do this. You could pin it down, or you could hold it down and draw with your paper, with your um, si um, your soluble marker. Let me get one of those real quick and show you. Um, this is, since I have it folded in half, that's the main reason why I'm pinning mine down. But if you just want to hold it down and use your marker to draw around it and then cut it out, that's fine too. Um, I kind of don't want to have to draw mine. And my pins are going to be in the way. Oh, my dog just hit the camera. I wish she would calm down and quit playing. I'm shifting my stuff around. <laughs> Lucy, I wish you would just lay down and be good. I have two dogs. The one I showed earlier was uh, Zoe. She's she's not my hyper dog. She just likes to have attention. This one, she likes to be with me. Lucy does, and she has to rearrange her bed all the time, and so that's what she was doing when she hit my camera. She backed into it. I keep trying to flatten this out to make sure it stays nice and flat because it is, um, this type of paper is really stiff and um, it tends to move, move around if you don't keep it nice and flat. I don't know how well. That may not lay flat for me. I might have to draw it after all, but no, I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. <laughs> There's several different ways of doing things. Um, let me get my scissors. Certain ways work better than others at different times, but um, this is the way I'm just choosing to do this particular one. The baby hat, I'm probably just going to draw it on there. And this is sticking out too far. Don't want it sticking out. Get it nice and flat. Okay, so you'll just cut around here, which this is going to be awkward for me because I'm right handed. And I'm trying to do this where y'all can see too, so it's making it even more difficult. So I'll just keep it laying down here. Once I get this one cut out, the um, other white piece of fabric, um, I'll be able to just use this as my template um, for my white fabric because I'm going to need another piece in the same shape. I'm having trouble trying to cut this. And 
And I'm trying not to cut my pattern because then I would end up making my uh, project smaller than what it was intended to be. Gonna throw that in my scrap basket. Okay. All right, and so, and I want to cut around this edge here too. So I'm holding my fabric nice and flat. I'm just gonna cut that off. And uh, I want to lay it down here. This will make it easier. Trying to work around this camera as I'm doing this is a little awkward. But you would do whatever makes it easier for you. You can, like I said, you can use your. Um, um, one of your markers just to draw out the pattern if you want to instead and then cut it out and the reason why I'm doing the flannel one first is because flannel tends not to shift around um, when you lay it on other fabric, it you know because it's kind of fuzzy. Oops, I just hit my camera. I'm gonna try to move it where I don't hit it again. But uh, it doesn't shift around like cotton does. So this would be say that you had a particular pattern that you really liked a lot. Like maybe there's a shirt pattern that you like to have different versions and different types of fabric. Cut it out. Um, the pattern the first time in your size in like the flannel fabric and use it as your pattern from then on out that way you don't have to work with the paper type pattern anymore because the fabric is a lot better type pattern for you to work with really I'm gonna cut this off so I don't have to keep messing with that I didn't get close enough, but that's okay. And if your edges are not completely straight, it's not a huge deal because you're going to, all of these edges are going to be on the inside of your project. So if you don't get them super straight, it's not a huge deal. Um, as long as you sew your, um, you know, your seams straight, then you're going to be good. Okay, so. There's that. I'm just going to take that out. Oops. I think I just dropped a pin. Oh, wait, no, I didn't. There it is. Okay, so here is our pattern. And I think I'm going to run a, my iron over that to flatten out that middle because I got a little bit of a crease in it from where I did that and then I'm going to get my white piece of fabric here in just a moment and that's what I'm going to use as the other side and uh, so I'm just going to lay it face down because if you had um, two patterns that you were going to be um, sewing together, then you would put their right sides facing, like this is your right side. You would put both of them facing each other, but white fabric, you know, both sides are the same, so um, that doesn't really matter. It's going to be the same on either side. Because with this project, what we're going to be doing is, um, once I get the other, I'm going to draw out my other one, or I could... It might even stay in place for me to cut it. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and pin it because um, once I cut it out, I'm going to need it pinned together anyway to sew it together. So 
I'm going to just go ahead and pin it. Um, normally, when I pin, I would pin like this, where it would be sticking out past my fabric. That's usually the way I pin things. But since um, it's easier to pull out as you're sewing. But since I'm wanting to cut corners and not take as long to make this pattern, I'm going to pin it inwards where the pin is not sticking out. And this is, um, I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. I do this for myself just so um, when I'm sewing I won't forget where I want to start and stop when I'm sewing. I'm going to make my hole, I'm not going to sew all the way around because I need a hole to turn it right side out. And I use different colored pins for my starting and stopping points because all the rest of them are like a purplish pink color. So I'm going to use these two that are a different color for my starting point and my stopping point. Um, so I know where to leave a hole whenever I'm sewing. So, and I'm trying to find the straightest edge possible for my hole, which you want at least two inches to be able to turn it right side out. So that's going to be one of my points. And I want a couple of inches here. I'll make sure I get this in far enough so I won't have it sticking out where my scissors will hit it when I'm cutting it. So that's my starting and stopping points. And then I'm going to just pin it all the way around. And you never want to pin sideways like this. Because um, if you do that, I did that a lot in the beginning too before I learned that when you're um, sewing, it's a lot harder to pull those pins out if you have them along the edges straight. And depending on which direction you're sending it through your sewing machine, it might be coming towards you. And they're just more difficult to get out and um, you're more likely to stick yourself with them too. Okay. I'm just kind of patting it down, making sure that it's not shifting a whole lot. I want it to stay in one place. While I'm pinning it. Stay as flat as possible. And when you do this, when you're on a soft surface like this, you tend to pin what's underneath it. I typically pin my stuff on a, a table, my table that's underneath this, so it won't stick into it. Let's see, which direction? Okay. in far enough and I don't think it will shift around too much since it's flannel as I cut this so and um, be sure to if you're new to sewing if you buy a good pair, pair of um, fabric scissors don't use them for cutting anything but fabric so don't use them to cut paper, don't use them to cut, um, sometimes you, you can cut down a zipper to, to a smaller size. Get an old pair of just regular scissors for that, like um, those cheap ones like they sell at Walmart that are like this. That's just um, any kind of just cheap ones that you can get. Put them aside and keep them for all of your um, paper cutting for patterns or for cutting um, zippers and different things like that. Because these cost a lot of money, and you can ruin them real quick, um, dull them by cutting other things. Um, zippers are horrible, but paper will actually dull them too, so just be aware of that. And if you're not thinking you'll get a really straight um, cut by doing it like I'm doing it, just use your um, marker and draw out because this is going to be kind of hard to see because it's white fabric just go ahead and draw out your pattern and then cut it out 
um, that make it a little bit easier than the way I'm doing it. I'm just doing this to save time. Let's see. Let me move my hand so I won't... Well, I'm still trying to hit the camera while I'm doing this. Trying to be able to get both hands on here at the same time and see what I'm doing. Okay, you're going to have to turn out of the way so I can see. And it is kind of hard to see it. Um, and it looks like I'm not cutting as close to it as I wanted to. But um, I've already got it pinned together, so I'll just make sure that my edges are nice. And... Uh, whenever I'm sewing around it that I get a better get closer and stuff and straighter edge to it I guess I'm too much of a perfectionist when it comes to <laughs> that kind of stuff because it really doesn't matter as long as you don't have a really like one piece is not a lot longer than the other one you're fine There's the center. And I'm saving these little scraps because um, I'm going to um, test out my um, stitches first with the, the fabric I've cut off of here um, before I actually put my project in it because um, it's always a good idea because um, from one project to the next, um, you never know um, if you got it set to the right settings that's going to work for that particular project as far as your tension um, so uh, it's always good to to keep the little pieces that you cut off and get a big enough piece that you'll be able to test it um, to make sure that um, your tension is correct because see these are not two pieces of cotton it's a piece of cotton and a um, piece of flannel. And uh, I think the last project I worked with was two, might have been two pieces of cotton. So the thickness is going to be a little bit different on this one than on the last thing I did. So my settings are probably going to have to change, possibly. Maybe, not necessarily, but it might. So you always want to do that. And if you don't have any extra, a big enough piece of extra fabric from the new project you're working on to test it, um, look in, like I keep a basket of all of my scrap fabric, and I constantly throw pieces in there that I know I can't use them for another project, but they're not teeny tiny pieces like this stuff that I'm cutting off right here. They're maybe a piece, piece that's about a, a square or something like that. I'll hang on to them and fill up my basket with them so that way whenever I come to a project that um, I need some that's similar to that I'll have it as some test fabric to use to run through my machine or if I'm trying out something new like um, I've been practicing with a bunch of new different sewing feet that I got for my sewing machine it's handy to have a bunch of pieces of scrap to use to practice with the different sewing feet to to see what kind of settings you need to set it on in order to uh, get the results that you're looking for and you don't feel bad about messing up the fabric because it's not fabric for any particular project Let's go cut that off to get it out of the way And once we get this sewn all the way around, um, we'll uh, turn it right side out and iron it flat. And then um, that piece of Velcro, we will um, just sew it. You can actually sew it down. Now, you can find Velcro that has a sticky side to it where you can stick it down to something. Um, don't 
get that kind if you plan on sewing it down to your project. Um, because if you send that through your sewing machine with that sticky stuff in between there, it, it will ruin it'll ruin your needle and it could gum up at your machine. So be careful because the ones that have sticky on the other side is meant purely just to use the sticky part to hold it in place and don't reinforce it with sewing it. Okay, so there we go. I've gotten it all cut the way I want it and I've got it marked at the bottom with two different needles to show me where I want to start and stop. And um, so we're going to move that over here. And I'm going to tilt this up a little bit because I don't think I'll need it quite that tilted for when we're sewing. Let's move over here to the sewing machine. All right. Get everything straight here. And um, here's my two test pieces. Um, it's one piece of the flannel and one of the white and what I'm gonna do just because I'm using white thread I'm gonna turn it where my right sides facing up so when I'm sewing I can kinda see my stitches a little bit better because it's hard to see white thread on white fabric so I'm just going to probably tilt this a little bit more because I want to move it closer see here. All right, I'm trying to make it work. I guess everything can be seen better. Um, right now I have my sewing machine. Um, I'm going to show you. I have mine set for a, a number two is a straight stitch on my machine. This is for the length of it, how long I want it. Um, four is for really bulky items. Um, Two, two and three are going to be more along the lines of the thinner stuff. Three is pretty typical, so I'm going to leave it on three. Um, this is um, really just the width of your, like it moves the actual needle. Here, I'll show you. If you move it up to, to a five, it moves it all the way to the left. If you move it to the middle, which is between three and two, it puts it in the middle. And if you move it over to zero, it moves it all the way to the right. You'll only be messing with this um, mostly when you're doing um, different types of design stitches and so forth. So usually you won't mess with that too much. And then up here, this is the one I just got through moving. This one is going to be my tension. Four is pretty typical. So I'm going to see how it goes. I might have to raise it up to a five, but I'm going to go ahead and see how it looks by just doing it on that one. Make sure everything looks good before I get started. So I really can't recall the last thing I did. Oh, that's going to be kind of hard to see. Okay, um, what you're looking for is you only want to see the top um, threads on the top. You don't want the bottom threads to be showing through, which it's not. And then on the bottom, same thing. You want the bottom thread to show. You don't want to see the top. That looks pretty good to me. So um, I think everything's set good. So I'm going to throw that off to the side and then make sure you always pull this out some because if it's too short it's going to come in undone. So I'm pulling it behind. always want to keep it behind. Alright so I'm going to, this is going to be my starting one, my yellow, so I'm going to take that out. So, and I'm going to get it close to the edge here. Yeah. And I like to start with mine in, in the fabric, so I'm going to turn my wheel where it actually starts with the needle in the fabric. And I'm going to sew forward. Um, a couple of stitches and then I'm going to back up. Okay, 
So now we're just going to sew forward. And this is like not straight. If I was sewing um, just a straight edge, I'd probably sew a lot faster. But this is going to be lots of curves. So you need to go a little bit slower when you're doing curves because it, you're going to have to be turning your fabric a lot. And I got too close to my, before I took my needle out, I was talking and went not paying attention. So that's not going to let your fabric move if that's in the way. Okay, I'm going to start. And see how I'm keeping my hands back behind what I'm sewing? That's the best thing to do. You're just guiding your fabric through. You're not pushing it through. You're just kind of shifting it to guide it underneath the needle. You don't want your hand down here because if you keep it over here, this this thing that comes down, it's going to actually... I'm going to see if I can get it where y'all can see that a little bit better. Because that's important. Let's see. Yeah, that's probably a little bit better so you can see it. Um, yeah, you don't want your hand here because that would hit it. And if you get it too close, you might sew your fingers. And that's, that's not something you want to do. So you're just going to keep them back here to, to move your fabric around. And this has lots of curves. So if you're new to sewing, don't get discouraged and think that you know you can't sew if you're having a lot of problems. Doing curves in the very beginning is challenging. So the baby hat will be a little bit easier, so that might be a better beginner project than this one, but this is a good one to practice on. And see, we're going to be doing a really sharp turn here. So, you're not going to be able to shift your fabric as easily. So if you start getting close, and you notice that you need to do a shift that you can't actually turn your fabric easily, make sure your needle is in the fabric all the way down. Then you're going to lift up the pressure foot, and you're just going to slightly shift the fabric this way. And if you have to do that ever so often, do that. Because otherwise you might end up with fabric that's wrinkled. And especially when you're doing um, corners, you usually have to do that a lot on corners. Where you have to stop and lift up your pressure foot and actually turn it. Let's move that out of the way because I'm coming around that corner and that's going to make it kind of difficult. And I will definitely have to shift it like that here in a minute because I'm getting to the end here. Trying to move my hand out of the way so you can see. So I'm going to make sure that's in there. And I'm going to lift this up and shift. And that's still a little awkward, so I'm going to do a little more shifting here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it and get it back in my fabric because I want to do another turn without it getting wrinkled. Okay, and it's still in there a little bit. I'm going to turn again. And getting used to the speed of your machine, too, can be um, challenging in the beginning also. So if you notice that you're having trouble going slow enough to this, you may want to um, practice with some other more straighter projects. that out of the way. Okay, flatten that out just a little bit. just the back a little bit because I don't want to
move my project around because this is one you're having to really oops hit my hand on there I wanted to actually shift it this way This would be a good time to get that one out of the way. Okay. I'll get that in the fabric too because I'm getting really close to the edge there. I'm going to try to straighten that out. Okay. Yeah, having to stop quite a bit around. How close to the edge did I get? I think I might have got a little too close. So you can always back up. So I'm going to hold up my backup button and I'm or reverse button, and I'm going to reverse one stitch because I think I got way too close to my edge there. So I'm going to turn there. Don't want to end up with a hole. Okay. little shifting there okay do a little more there all right so now I'm going to take that one out of the way and just keep an eye on it on the edge here there's you can see a little bit of a gap between my fabric and where my fabric stops and where I'm sewing. As long as I don't go off the side there. And I'd have to say, and I got my hand in there too close, almost got hit. Um, finding a way to go slow enough and practicing enough to go slow t does take a lot of practice because that's one of the things that I had um, probably the most issue with when I first started was learning how to keep it from going really, really fast. Because when you're new, it's, um, it's really hard to gauge that in the beginning. Okay, so I'm coming around to my um, white needle, so that's letting me know that once I get to this point, I'm going to need to stop, because if I keep going, I won't be able to re and turn my project inside out. So I'm just going to do a few more stitches, and then I'm going to hold down my reverse button and reverse a couple of stitches. Alright, and so now we're done. So I've got a little bit of a about well that's bigger of a hole than I wanted but that's okay it'll still be fine so I got that cut I'm gonna move over here so you guys can see um, I need some scissors to cut my little threads off of here can't hardly see them because they're white So there's my little threads. And now um, I also have a, a point turner that helps you with your turning it right side out, especially if you have corners. Um, this one's got mostly um, rounded edges to it, so it's not. I'm mostly going to use my po point turner on the end of it where the top of the bib is at. I'll use my fingers to um, do the rest of it. And that's going to be the hardest part to turn right side out because it's such a tiny end to it. Just keep working it out. Almost. <laughs> All right, almost.
almost got it. And if I have too much difficulty getting the this nice and out good for I think I actually it worked pretty good. Yeah, that did all right. I don't think I'll have to use my point turner on that one. Let's see if I can push it through with my fingers on the other side. That might make it a little bit simpler. It's been a while since I made the other bib. It was, um, I was going to do this project in the library back in April, I think. And, um, so I already made the other pra uh, practice bib back, I think, in February. Because I usually try to make, make a test project, um, an example version of it at least a month or two before we have the class. Because I want to make sure it's not too difficult of a project before I teach it. Because I like to keep everything pretty, pretty beginner type projects. Oh yeah, there we go. I was able to get that to come out. And, um... Before we sew it down and sew on the Velcro, um, I'm going to um, put it under the iron and press it. Because um, when you go to, we're going to do a top stitch all the way around. And if you press it, these edges will stay nice and straight whenever we go to. Um, we won't even have to pin it down if we press it. So we're going to do that. Oh, Lucy, you're going to have to move. My dog got in the way. She had her bed in the middle of the floor, so I had to move her. Okay. Alright, so. And my, I'm going to turn my iron down to get it to kick back on. It it cools off and goes into like a safe mode where it, it um, doesn't, it quits heating up, so it won't catch anything on fire if it falls over when you're not using it. And this will help press everything out nice and good too. So the main edges you're going to, I mean you still want to kind of work on the other edges just to make sure they're as flat as possible before you press it. So they'll look a little bit nicer. Okay. So this is going to have a flat edge to it and I want the bottom and the top to be flat with one another so I'm trying to make sure that they're kind of nice and straight before I press it. And I'm going to press this end first before I press the top part because this part's more important. <laughs> anyway, okay, that looks good. And if you notice, I'm just putting my, I'm not like moving it around. I'm like picking it up and then put pressing it down. You get a better press whenever you do that. I've got some wrinkles, it looks like. That's the thing about the, doing the, I might be able to straighten it out just a little bit there. There we go. Something with lots of curves, it's easy to get wrinkles in them. So I'm going to turn this around so I can get to it better. I'm trying to watch out for my fingers. Because this one steams a lot and I can actually burn myself with it. It heats up so much. Which is nice. Having an iron that will heat up really good is very helpful on sewing projects. Okay, I think we got this one nice and flat, so now we're just going to do a top stitch all the way around, and then once we get that done, then we'll sew our pieces um, of Velcro like the on this side and then this side so it go together. Alright, so move back over here. Oops. And I already have my pieces of Velcro pre-cut out too. It's just 
square pieces. I might have to cut them down if they're a little bit big for um, the ends here. I just kind of knew that I needed them somewhat small, so I just cut them. Okay, and this is where my hole is, so I'm going to start sewing before the hole. Um, so a little bit before the hole, and I'm going to get as close to the edge as possible. And I'm going to grab this because I don't want it to... I'm going to get as close. If you can't... I'm, I'm getting like like within like... Let me show you. If you're still new to sewing, you don't have to get as close as I'm getting um, on this. Let's see. I hope you can see this. It's really hard to see. But um, I'm, I'm right... If you see my finger down here, I'm about right here on it. If you can't get that close and keep it straight, don't worry about it. You can come back this far as long as, let me show you, see the fabric here? As long as you don't go past this point where the, the fabric is, as long as you make sure that you're sewing at least right here, you're going to grab fo both pieces of fabric and you're going to get it, the, the um, hole sewed close. So if you're still new, don't don't panic if you can't get as close as I do. If if you can't get this close, don't worry about it. As long as you're right about here and you're still getting both pieces of fabric, because if you go past it, you're still going to have a hole. So you want to get somewhere in the middle there when you're sewing. So I'm going to sew forward just a couple of stitches, and then I'm going to back up a couple. You always do that at the beginning and the end of a pro. Uh, whenever you're um, sewing something at the beginning and then when you get done at the very end you back up also to reinforce your stitches. Okay, mine is not laying as flat as I wanted it to. Let's see here. Get close to my edge here. I'm gonna lift it up just a little bit. Since I was looking to see where I was so far, that's why I stopped. It's like, where am I? Where am I at so far? And now I'm getting to the areas that I'm doing lots of turns, so I'm going to slow down a little bit more. This, this way because this is really turning a lot on me. And I'm going to move my Velcro out of the way. I have a feeling I'm going to knock that in the floor because it's right at the edge of my sewing machine. With this fabric right here, it might knock it off. Okay. Okay, and that's getting folded under, so I need to move it.
trying not to let my machine get ahead of me here. Oops. I don't know if I can... I'm going to try. There we go. Wasn't sure if I could turn it without going off my fabric or not. Yep, back around to where I began. There's my beginning. So I'm just going to sew up to that point. Well, and then I'm going to just, uh, I can't tell if I've gotten hit in that point yet or not. There it is. So now I'm going to reverse. Okay, there we go. So that's done. So... And if it doesn't pull loose like this, um, the knob that's on the side of your machine, turn it towards you until it comes loose. Don't ever just try to yank it out of there because <laughs> uh, it's probably caught on something. And if you keep turning the knob towards you, it eventually will um, uh, come loose for you. I'm just going to cut off my excess... Um, threads that I have that are on the bottom and then I'm, we're going to sew the velcro on alright um, I guess I'll show you how I'm going to place it on here before beforehand so this is the that's not rough it's kind of the softer piece and this is the rough one so I'm going to lay that on there um I think I'm going to do about that size because if you go too small, I think I went pretty small on my other one and it was a little difficult sewing it in place. Yeah, I made it quite a bit quite a bit smaller and it was a little bit harder sewing that in place because it was so small. Um, and you want it to stay on there as long as your Velcro is not going to go off the side of your fabric. So I'm going to do this one first. Once I get it sewn in place, I'll lay this one over to get an idea of where I need to sew this one so they'll be directly on top of each other. So that, that'll be a good guide. So I'm going to lay that one off to the side. And um, you can't really pin this, so you're going to have to hold it in place while you sew it on there. It's a little too small. And um, when I cut my threads earlier, I didn't cut them. Yeah, they're, they're long. Okay. So... Just gonna have to be really careful since we're not gonna be pinning this in place. I'm gonna start at one of the corners and I'm gonna start with my needle in there, but I wanna get closer to the edge. All right, so, and I'm gonna manually turn the knob that's on the side of the machine forward a couple. Because this is such a small thing, and now I'm going to hold down my reverse button, and I'm also going to manually sew it, so I'm back stitching. Okay, so now I kind of have it tacked in place a little bit, so it won't shift quite as much on me. And if you have to manually do this, don't worry about it. It's um, Go ahead and do it if it's easier. Let's see. Yep, that's going to hit there, but I'm going to go ahead and let's see how close am I. I'm going to lift this up so I can kind of look and see. I'm really close to the edge. I'm afraid that's too close, so I'm going to back up one. I wish my stitch was not that long, but that kind of tacks it in place. So I'm going to turn it sideways. Actually, I can do a little bit of an angle stitch here. There we go. And then straighten it up. really close so I'm going to manually turn it. Okay, that's that's good. I like that. So now I'm going to turn it back this way. Hmm. I want my corners to be nice and straight or tacked down good because whenever you pull Velcro it come, kind of comes loose. Yeah, I'm going to go 
up and then back one so my corners are a little more um, sturdier about staying down and then I'm doing it at an angle like I did the other one oops and then I'm gonna straighten it up I want to get as close to the edge as possible to make sure that it it stays okay and that one I think I'm a lot better situated there I think I'm just gonna turn it I don't think I have to do an angled one to get it on there good I'm not as close to the edge as I was on the other corner so okay all right I think I'm right back where I started I'm just gonna go forward and then back a couple and there we go the beginning and the end all in this kind of in the same spot so show you how I, I, I wanted to get as close to the edges as possible without getting too close um, so it'll hold down good all right so I'm gonna cut this off and then cut off my excess threads and then we'll figure out where we want to put the other one Threads out of the way. Okay, so here's my other piece. So I want to make sure, as far as how I'm laying it and stuff, I don't want to. I'm going to turn it around where it's not actually going to stick because that'll be hard to pull it loose. But I'm going to lay it down here and then lay this on top where I want it to be. And then I'm going to grab it and see the positioning of it. Okay, so that's really close to the edges there okay it's kinda lined up with that so I'm gonna flip it over and it was really close to the edges and you could even if you wanted to round that corner off if you didn't want that corner to stick out as much which I might just clip that little edge since they're so close Oops, I didn't quite get that. Yeah, just around the edge a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to sew this piece down. And even though it's little teeth of plastic or whatever, um, I'm trying to get that positioned right back where I had it before, um, you can sew over. It's not going to hurt your needle on your sewing machine. So, make sure I keep it in place as where without shifting it. And I'm going to get it in my corner here. Let's see. I don't know if how close the edge that is. I can't. It's kind of hard to see since it's white and white together. Huh. I can kind of see all the light I have it's difficult to see I'm just gonna make sure oops I'm gonna bring my needle down that kind of gives me a better idea how close to the edge all right there I am all right so I'm gonna walk it forward a couple just to tack it down then I'm gonna back it up So now I'm going to sew forward, and I'm close to the edge, but I think I can get one more. There we go. And now I'm going to turn it. And you do want to get as close to the edge as possible. That's a little too close, so I'm going to back up. I think I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other one where I do a little bit of a diagonal stitch on the corner before straightening it up with the edge of the Velcro. Oops, I kind of liked where it was but I went too far so I'm going to go ahead and stitch forward but then I'm going to go back one stitch. 
because I went further than I wanted to, but that's okay. It just kind of reinforced that corner, even though it went off a little bit. All right. And there we go. And then I'm just going to back up. Since I had already started on that corner on the other edge, I'm not going to come back around that corner. All right. So, yeah, everything's tacked down really good, so I'm not going to worry about that. So, there we go. And so that one's done. I'm going to cut off the threads again. And then we can move on to the hat. It's The hat's going to be a little more straightforward. Um, the only different things we're going to do with the hat that we didn't do with this is, um, of course, there's no Velcro involved, but um, we're going to be doing a zigzag stitch on it. All right, so now we've got got your little hat, or hat, <laughs> already talking about the hat, even though we haven't, um, but there's the, the bib, we're all done with that, it's, you know, it's pretty simple, um, and Velcro holds really well, so, I mean, you don't have to do a button, but if you wanted to do a button, you could always do a button instead, but of course, this is going to be for um, a newborn, a very tiny baby, because <laughs> um, this one's got a really small neck on it, too. But uh, there's different patterns out there. This is the, just the one that I happen to have found. Um, you can find other ones. Or if, say, that you didn't like the bib, it wasn't big enough, you could take the pattern that we did here and you could um, take it on to a photocopier and enlarge it and, you know, make it bigger. So if you wanted to have a little bit bigger one, you could if you wanted to make one. And that was my other one I had made, which they're going to be the same. All right, so let's... Um, Move on to the hat, and that's the the one that I did first. And um, this time, I picked a little little bit different fabric from this one. Um, let's see. I don't think I'm going to need. I'm trying to think. My ironing board. Do I need my ironing board for this one? Because I've already <clears throat> flattened out my fabric. Let's see. Let me get the patterns out of the way. The one we just did. The hat here. That's the pattern for it. I know it looks huge, but <laughs> what you're going to do is, um, see it's folded. And that's why it's so much longer than the one, uh, what it ends up looking like. So the hat looks like it's going to be a big hat, but... Um, all the folding that's involved in it, it, it ends up being so much smaller. And this is the fabric. I had two different kinds at work. I just decided to do the pink kitty cat one this time. And so we're going to need two of these. Um, and really, truly, the easiest thing for this one is this kind of the same thing we did with the other one where we folded the fabric. So I'm going to fold it where the right sides are facing each other. So I'm just going to fold it over. And lay my pattern on top of it and I'm going to do the <clears throat> same thing that I did last time uh, where I just pinned it to it and then um, cut it out um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think ahead of time how exactly yeah I think that'll work okay so we'll go ahead and do that I'm going to get scissors and my pins and with this one when we sew it we're going to be sewing this this edge first um, and then we'll be uh, folding the edge of the the fabric like one time we'll fold it under sew it down and then we'll fold it again and then we won't sew down the second part we'll tack it to the edge there so this one's pretty straightforward. Besides having to do a zigzag stitch on it, um, I'm going to drag this down a little bit further. I want to have some excess, since I cut it kind of big, I want to have a little excess fabric left here so I can practice my zigzag stitches on this fabric um, <clears throat> before we start sewing because um, there's different uh, lengths of your stitch and different... Um, widths of a zigzag stitch so depending on how 
you want the zigzag to look, you kind of have to practice with it a little bit before you actually start sewing. So I want this, and this is stretchy material, so you want to flatten it out really good. And if you have, um, there's different needles that you can buy for your sewing machine. Um, for this type of stretchy fabric, they recommend a ballpoint needle that's not sharp. Um, I would recommend if you were working with a large project out of this type of material to go ahead and switch your needles to a ballpoint needle. Um, this is such a small project that I noticed it didn't seem to make a huge difference if I switched needles. But um, whenever I made a larger project, it was out of jersey material. Um, it was helpful to switch the needle. Um, it made it a little bit easier. But this is, like I said, such a small project, so little that switching to a ballpoint needle is not going to make, make a huge difference. Okay, I think that's all, maybe, maybe the top. But <clears throat> here what I'm doing is if you don't want to pin it down like this, um, just putting the fabric, and I think I did this, I did this the, on my project whenever, the first hat I did, I actually laid it down and took my pin, my water soluble pin, and I, I drew it and then cut it out and then um, cut out my other one. But I wanted to go ahead and cut both pieces out at the same time, so that's why I pinned them down together like that. And also I can kind of leave um, it pinned whenever I'm, s well, no, I'll have to unpin it to, um, to, s uh, to uh, take the pattern off before I sew it. So I guess I really didn't save myself a whole lot of time doing it this way. <clears throat> Alright, so I'm just going to cut this out. And stretchy material does tend to want to move around a lot more on you. Um, and if you ever thought about buying a serger, sergers are really great. Um, for stretchy material if you're working on like say a shirt or something like that and you wanted there's certain edges of uh, clothing that's in the stretchy material that you don't want to stretch um, and if you use I'm trying to figure out what side I'm gonna move my iron because I might get a little too close to it and burn myself that wouldn't be good um, on those types of projects, a serger would be nice to keep your um, fabric from the edges from stretching, the parts that you don't want to stretch. But um, you can also do that with a zigzag stitch um, with a regular sewing machine. Let's see. I'm hoping I'm doing a good job of cutting this because I didn't pin it a lot. Trying to make sure it lays as flat as possible. I'm trying not to stretch the material either when I'm cutting it. Because if I stretch it outwards, then um, it's going to be too small. I'm trying to make sure that it's laying as flat as possible when I'm cutting it. I'm trying not to cut my fingers. Because these scissors are sharp. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to hang on to this fabric. So I can practice with it in a minute. Alright. So there's my pieces cut out. So I'm done with that. 
and they got little spots in them too from where the needles and that's a, probably another reason why they want you to use a ballpoint needle when sewing it because it but it's just going to be on the inside of the fabric something sparkly that's on it I don't know where that's from okay <laughs> sparkles okay so um, we've gotten that and now I'm going to go ahead and pin it because we're gonna sew just the edges here And this is typically how I usually pin my stuff because it, it makes it a lot easier to pull them out as you're sewing. And since this is such a stretchy stuff too, um, pinning my stuff a little bit closer than I normally would, I usually would leave a bigger gap in between my pins with the cotton fabric. But since this is so stretchy, I feel like I really need to keep them a little closer. Alright. I'm going to move this over to my sewing machine. Move. I'm going to keep my iron out because with the iron, um, I'm going to fold it and kind of iron it a little bit in a few minutes after we get done sewing the edges. We're going to do a little bit of practice with um, our zigzag stitch. So I've got the leftover fabric and actually I'm going to cut some of it off because it's got so many pieces hanging off of it. I just need something to practice with. I don't want all these little loose. I just need something that's kind of square. All right. So I just caught, cut me a small square from that leftover fabric. And I want to see them, so I'm going to turn it where I can see the white stitches on this. And just going to put that in down. Oops, hit my knee. All right. So with my machine, I'm going to turn this so y'all can see. Alright. Um, these are the different stitches that are on my machine. Everyone's, it's going to look a, bit, a little bit different the way they're set up. But the two is for my straight stitch, and the three is for my zigzag. So if you go over here, this is, this is the numbers for the different types of stitches. So it's on my um, straight stitch, so I'm going to turn it to a three, because that's going to be my zigzag. This is just the length of the stitch. I'm going to leave it on a three for now to see how it looks. And this can affect, too, how your zigzag stitch looks. So um, I'm going to leave it on this just so I can um, do a few stitches and see what happens um, as far as what the zigzag looks like. And then I'll make adjustments um, depending on what they look like. So I'm going to actually, since I don't know what it's going to do, I'm going to have as much room to practice as possible so I'm going to start on this edge and I'm going to do a couple of stitches which oh actually I kind of like it surprise surprise oops let me show that's a good one I like that because it's it's um far enough apart and it it still has a nice little stretch to it so actually I like that 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 one. You can get the zigzags closer where they're bunched together closer and it just depends on what you're sewing and what you want it to look like. This is the type of zigzag I want for what I'm working on this time. I want it kind of you know spaced out like that. I don't want the stitches very long. If I wanted them a lot longer I would turn my stitch length up to like a four to, but I don't want a really long one on this. I think that's a good length so I'm gonna keep it at that. I'm surprised. Usually I have to play with it a little bit to get it where I want it. So that one actually is working pretty good for what I need. So I'm going to start at the one of my edges here. And um, I still have right sides facing each other because I'm so you can see here I got my right sides facing each other when I'm sewing. And I'm going to get close to the edge here. And 
start about there. Um, I'm going to try to, I think my camera is trying, having difficulty uh, showing you what I'm doing here, so I'm going to do a little adjustments here so you can maybe see a little bit better about what I'm so how I'm sewing this. Well, I'm having trouble getting close because everything, well, this will just have to do, I guess. Try to center everything as best as possible. Okay, I've got to move that out of the way right away because we don't want to sew over the needle. And I'm going to go forward a couple stitches and then I'm going to back up. And it was stretching on me, so I'm, I'm letting go and just letting it do it itself. Okay. All right. And I'm keeping the fabric lined up with the edge of the sewing foot here. I'm going to take that out and trying not to stretch the fabric, letting it, the machine pull it through. Because you definitely, with this type of fabric, don't want to be pushing or pulling because you want it to be nice and flat. Let it do all the work for you as far as feeding the fabric. Almost thinking my tension looks a little, little bit tight. I'm going to loosen it just a little bit. Because it looked kind of like it was bunching up a little bit. Yeah, loosening. I went and changed my tension. It was right on four, and I, I turned it um, where it's a little closer to three. It seems like it's doing a little bit. It's not quite trying to bunch it up like it did before. I could probably even loosen it up a little bit more. Kind of close to the top of the edge there on my the top, and I probably I probably wouldn't be having these problems if I had switched my needle too. I can't. I think I have a ballpoint still, so I, I things would look better if I'd switched to a ballpoint. I think when I do the brim of the hat, I'm going to switch over so I can show y'all the proper way of doing this. And that way we can see a difference too on how, what kind of a difference it makes whenever you actually use the stuff you're supposed to. All right, so I'm coming to the end here. I'm gonna get a little bit closer, and then I'm gonna back up. All right. It does take a moment or two longer to switch out the needle, but it's not a huge deal. So. All right. So, yeah. All right, so. <laughs> so the wrinkles that I have here probably has to do with the fact that I didn't switch my needles like I was supposed to. I think I got a lucky on the last one I did, and I maybe I switched the other one and just didn't remember remember doing it. But, um, yeah, so it is, it's not going to lay flat because I didn't. And I think my tension needed to be changed, too. So, that's not quite looking the way it should, but, um, let me look real quick and see if I've got, I should have practiced a little bit more on my practice um, piece and I got really close to the edge when I was sewing there so you can really see that so there's a lot of mistakes in there for the way I did that so let me see and you could always I mean making a mistake like this you can always go out and rip it rip all the stitches back out and start over I'm gonna look and see yeah, I've got some ballpoints. 
So um, this is, um, if you look in your manual, um, it'll recommend, and I think the pattern even, let's see, the pattern, yeah, she mentions uh, a pro tip says to set your machine to a loose zigzag stitch, length three with uh, 1.5, which mine wasn't quite like that. Um, and use a ballpoint needle. So, um, if I'd been smart <laughs> and paid attention to that a little bit closer, I would have, have switched to my ballpoint, which that's an easy thing to do. I just got in a hurry um, when showing y'all how to do this. So, before we do the brim, I'll do that real quick. Um, let's see here. I'm looking for my stuff to undo. All right, my needle. So you have to do this part to undo your needle, and you're supposed to turn off your machine before you do this. And I'm gonna unthread everything too, just the top. I'm gonna unthread, and then I'm gonna turn this. And take my needle out. Let's see here. Um, all right. And then when I'm putting it in, there's the flat of it. I can't see what I'm doing. And if you have trouble getting your needle in with this in the way just just take it off while you're doing this part Let's see where's my little coin and uh, you want to make sure that it's pushed up there all the way before you tighten it back up my hands are kind of slick here I want to make sure and when you tighten it you don't want to want it tight enough that it doesn't come loose but you don't want to make it too tight either and um, with my machine to make sure that it's in there far enough when you go to thread I'm threading my machine again when you go to thread it and I'm going to turn it back on when you use this threader here if it's not lined up properly and you go to do this it won't pull it through which Mine must be lined up because it pulled it right through. There's no problem. All right. So there. Changing it out is not not a hard thing to do. I was just being lazy whenever I was doing this. So. All right. So to finish this up, um, to do the brim, as you can see, I'm going to use my other one as an example. Um, you folded it down this much, so I'm going to measure that real quick to see how far I had measured, folded it. So, from the edge here, let's see. I think I went by the pattern on what she said, which it looks like is about it. I folded it about it two, two inches is what I did. So... Here, I'll turn this one out. So we're literally just going to fold this over by two inches. So. I'm just going to measure to see how far two inches is going to be. I, I didn't have it exactly at two inches on my other one, and that worked pretty good. Let's see. It was pretty close. Yeah, it was about a fourth. Yeah. That was about how close my other one was. So we're folding it like that. I'm showing the original one I did. And then right down the middle, you're just going to sew, which if you're not real sure, you can always mark it. Um see here that was two inches I'd already moved it so from the edge 
Yeah, she sewed it about an inch. Yeah, about a... Hmm, that's a little less than an inch. From there, yeah. It's not quite an inch. So, we're going to... And I'm going to take um, on my machine since... I'm going to be sewing around something that's kind of like a hat like this around I want it to be able to open up I'm gonna remove this piece to get it out of the way so I can fit it around my machine and so we're gonna measure where I wanted to sew it which we did it right about yeah it again just to make sure all right so I need to slide this over a little bit further and pull my thread over here so I can see it and that's pretty close to about the middle okay so that's the where we're going to be sewing it so I'm going to put my pressure foot down I'm going to move this forward. All right. And you can kind of, in order to see my little lines over here, I'm going to kind of watch that. And that's how I'm going to make sure that I'm keeping it. Because if you try to line it up with any other things, it's, it's not going to be as accurate. So I'm going to keep it lined up with that. And so um, a couple of stitches, and then I'm going to back it up. And I'll loosen up my tension a little bit more. Okay. And when you get to the seam areas here, that's going to be a little bit bulkier. Um, I didn't flatten out my seams as much. Sometimes if you open up your seams, it'll do a better job of getting a flatter. It'll, it'll lay flatter when you go to sew it. So I'm trying to open those up just a little bit to make sure that'll do a little bit better job of keeping it straight too as it sews it. And it's wanting to do a stretching thing here so I'm trying really hard not to let it stretch. Okay. I want my fabric to be loose as it's sewing through here. Get a little closer to my other seam. Okay, and I'm going to try to open up my seams some more on this side too. So they're open on top of each other and lined up. to my other side. Okay, I'm just going to back up a couple of stitches. And there we go. Okay, I'm going to pull that out. And this is all the sewing part. The what's left to do I got all kinds of stuff up here now since I got out the stuff to change my needle um, now the last part that's done left is to tack your um, hat in place let's see here get these threads off of there
Okay. Okay. And... And you'll notice how much flatter this is laying down compared to whenever I did the top of the hat. So it definitely makes a difference on the needle that you use. Okay, and then to get your brim, um, actually I ended up making this brim a lot smaller than I did the other one. You will take your iron. I know I don't say iron. It's kind of southern twang to me. <laughs> but um, you'll just um, iron it down. And then on the seams here, the seam edges, you'll just take a needle and thread. And on the inside here, you'll just tack it to the inside so it'll stay on um, flipped up on the corners. And that's, that's it on the hat. But once you iron it down in place, you can iron it where the, um, the zigzag stitch is not visible. Because I, I did a better job, job on this one where you didn't see it as much. And I, I had a better, bigger um, brim to it, too. But, yeah, on the corner here, you just hand sew that in place like so. It's just very easy. You don't even, and you hide all of your, your um, knots and everything underneath there. And that's it. That's all there is to the hats. I won't show you how to sew, tack it down, because I, I think everyone should be, y'all y'all should know how to hand sew a little bit, I guess, because that's a pretty simple thing to do. All right, um, that's it for this one. Um, next week, um, yeah, I didn't bring any of my stuff from work with me, but I'm 90% sure I'm doing um, a crochet class next week. Um, for my sewing, or not sewing, my crafting with Opal program, my 7 o'clock next Thursday. Um, and then the week after that, um, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do a lanyard. Oh, excuse me. And um, I'll show you, I don't have an example of the lanyard, but I have, um, this, I just stuck it in some fabric I was going to practice with. But we've got these um, that we'll give out and some fabric that we'll give out. Um, if you want to get supplies for that class, and that'll be two weeks from today, it'll be, um, it'll just be a simple lanyard on, um, it won't be a breakaway lanyard like the ones that you can buy in the store, but it'll be just a simple lanyard. Or if you don't want to do a lanyard, if you want to do like, um, um, something for your keys, you know, to loop, a loop to put onto your keychain, then, um, we, you could do that too. It's the same type of project that would, you could do either one. Um, let me switch over to me real quick. Oops, All tilted. But um, that's what we'll um, for the next couple. And then um, the last Thursday in this month, um, I believe we're going to be doing another painting, a paint along. So that that should be all for this month. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it. Um, so. Uh, Tomorrow I'll be doing a another sewing 101. Um, that one I'm kind of going to reevaluate if I'm going to continue doing that class. I'm not sure if there's a lot of interest in that one. It's a one o'clock program on Fridays. I started that the beginning of May, and it was real popular the first couple of times, and then didn't seem like as many people were watching it as much. So. Uh, I'm not really sure about that one. That one's just all basics, um, and I try to make it where people will ask questions if they have questions about sewing and um, issues that they're having, um, but um, I hadn't really had anyone asking me questions recently, so it's um, not really working out the way the class was originally intended, so um, I like giving information, but I'm going to eventually give out a uh, quick having like um, informational type stuff to give out for that class. Um, I kind of was hoping there would be people that would, you know, have questions about their machine and so forth and would ask me questions during the class, but um, we'll see if that one continues, how much longer that one continues, I'm not sure. All right, well that's um, it for tonight and um, I will um, be back next Thursday at seven for a um, beginner's crochet class. Uh, 
we are probably going to try to give away some supplies for that class too. So just check out our Facebook page and we'll have more information about it. Bye. Until next time.